Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm delivering to you a Kirishima x Bakugo story and Listener is also there. This isn't a part 2 to the same, well, similar fanfic that I've wrote I think two weeks ago. So uh, sorry about that, but I still hope that you enjoy this one just as much as I enjoyed writing it. Uh, one more thing. I would like it if you could watch this video until the end, like or dislike it and comment something down below. If you don't know what to comment down below, why don't you tell me if you play Genshin Impact or not and if you do, who's your favorite character? And if you don't, why don't you try it? It's free to play. Anyways, anyways, uh, one last thing, I would greatly appreciate it if you could uh, share this video around, if you can get just one more person to watch my videos, uh, well, technically on the regular, I would be eternally grateful to you. Uh, you can get people to do that by, well, sharing my videos, maybe clipping your favorite part, putting it on TikTok here. This is me allowing it you to do that. You can clip it, just link to my videos, please. And uh, fan art, no matter what fan art. Even Rule 34 is fine, and I'm fine with Rule 34. Yes, I'm one of the few people that are okay with it. Maybe that's why I haven't gotten any yet. Should I be against it and you would do it? If if you have any questions on who to ship me with, I have a crush on Mafet from Undertale, uh, Ning Wang from Genshin Impact, and, and Chica from Love is War. Please don't judge me. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get right into it. Today has been highly stressful. The owner of the hero agency you had been working under with your provisional hero license had been beaten into the hospital. Which meant that his sidekick took his place temporarily. And the guy hated you. But it did advance you in your hero training and education. So you bit into the sour apple and went with it. Then there were tests coming up. Important tests. And you were really, really lacking in the math department. It just didn't make sense to you. Whenever you looked at how to go after a problem, your inner voice screamed at you, HOW DO PEOPLE COME UP WITH THIS TRIPE? You sighed helplessly and dramatically, while sinking into the common room couch. The only reason students learned in the common room was to subtly hint, Hey, I need help. Please, for the love of God, help me. Save me. I don't want to be held back. Or expelled. You already had three sleepless nights behind you. So when your mind had decided to give you the sweet relief of passing out, you had no will to fight. To stay awake. Your dreams were black. Nothing really happening. Still unsure on your stance on that. Sometime later, however, you return to the world of the living. The reason were two pair of heavy footsteps coming closer. I swear to God I'm going to kill that brat, shouted one of the voices. That was clearly your classmate Bakugo. Dude, calm down. Please. And that was Kirishima. Little fucker ruined this evening. The two went on bickering while walking over to you. Ah, oh, crap, said Bakugo upon spotting you. We gotta be quiet. You heard the noise of moving clothes as Bakugo shrugged. Whatever. I'm going to bed. Night. A pair of heavy footsteps immediately walked somewhere to your right. And if the loud crashing of a door a few seconds later was any indication, he was in his room now. Kirishima, on the other hand, just sighed and walked over to the sofa that stood opposite to you. Before sitting down, he asked quietly, but still loud enough for you to hear, Hey, you really sleeping? Your heart made a jump. To avoid any weird twitches on your face, you groaned quietly and rolled on your stomach, letting out a single decent snore that just barely sounded real enough to not seem fake. Kishima sighed in relief. Ah, <sighs> good. After a moment of silence, he spoke. Then, uh, 
Can I tell you something? I f feel like I'm going to die if I don't. You grinned. And thankfully you couldn't see it. He was about to tell you a secret. I love this guy. Like, a lot. For a split second, you were about to jump up, giggle like a little girl and ask him thousands of questions, but that would be counterproductive, wouldn't it? You heard the noise of stretching leather. He must be leaning back into his seat. We went on a date today. Well, sort of. He thinks it was a meetup with the boys. You could practically hear him smile and suppress a loud laugh. <laughs> Too bad the others didn't know that the meter was today. Cheeky. Very cheeky, he thought. It was at the docks. There's this little amusement park. Privately owned. Admission is free, but every attraction requires payment. He tapped with his fingers on the sofa while thinking of what to say next. And for a moment you thought you had gotten behind your rules. It was fun. We ate lots of cotton candy. I haven't had cotton candy in years. He sighed happily. Like a grandfather reminiscing about their high school days. Except this memory just happened. It was magical. I don't know how I did it without complimenting him every four minutes. He leaned forward as he basked in the memories. His eyes were practically glowing when we went on the big ferris wheel. So many lights. You didn't think Hiroshima was capable of such emotions. You had seen him more like a dude bro through your time at UA. Turns out you never truly know someone until you pretend to sleep next to them and they have something they want to get off their chest. The red had blushed, and sadly you couldn't see it. The way the lights reflected in his eyes... He paused and chuckled. <laughs> Wait, didn't I already say that? He inhaled with embarrassment. <sighs> Looking into them felt like I was being dragged into a sea of fire. He paused. Uh, but, but like, in a, in a romantic kind of way, not, not, not burning to death. You know what I mean, right? Actually, you didn't. He sighed happily, however. <sighs> his voice, his mannerisms, his funny little requests and his reprimands. Kishima licked his lips as his imagination took hold of him. I want him to hold me. Kiss me. Just imagining his soft, callous lips pressing on mine. His hot breath tickling down my neck. His hands rubbing over my back as our tongues meet in the middle. Ah. Kishima shuddered with pleasure and he really wanted to add one more thing on his train of thought. Cautiously he asked, Are you still sleeping? Almost too innocently. While he was quietly waiting for a reply, you felt your nose tingle. If you cease now, the jig was up. After about a minute of silence, he continued, I want him to do me. I don't even know how two guys would do it. I mean, I guess two girls could do like a scissor motion, but that sounds painful when you're a guy. <laughs> he went back into thought and you suppressed bursting into laughter. Then Kirishima blushed upon coming to a realization. Uh, oh, yeah. I, f I, I think I figured it out. He blushed harder. I, uh, I think I'm going to bed. He quickly rose on his feet and rushed into the same direction Bakugu went mere moments ago. As soon as you heard his door shut, you sneezed. Oh god, I thought I would die, you mumbled to yourself. 
Then, a few seconds later, you heard the sound of a door opening. Crap, you muttered. Please don't be Kirishima, you thought. Before throwing yourself back on the sofa, better safe than sorry. Heavy footsteps approached you from behind. Was that Bakugo? Did, did he listen on you? Or, well, did he listen on Kirishima? He paused upon arriving right next to your head. You could hear the rustling of his clothes as his face drew near to yours, and smell his cotton candy-like breath. You up? He asked just mere centimeters from your ear. Almost in response, you groaned quietly and rolled over, your back now facing the other couch. Huh. Good, he growled. Can I tell you a secret? He chuckled to himself and in a high-pitched tone said, No, but I'm asleep. That was a test. If you would have giggled, he knew you were awake. And it actually took you an entire day's worth of strength to not immediately laugh like a 12-year-old girl. The blonde then proceeded to sit down on the armrest next to your head. Don't worry. I'm gonna fart just to check if you're asleep or not. He growled. You thank whatever deity might be watching over you. Then he sighed. You fucking brat. Ruin everything. Some stupid kid won at the claw machine that I was eyeing the entire evening. You screamed internally. This entire situation was ridiculous. Some pitbull blushy. Pitbulls are his favorite kind of dog. He chuckled. Man, this guy is the only person I can listen to whenever they talk about their useless interests. He shrugged. But I guess that's because I like him. The need to go on your feet and drag him into Kirishima's room rose. If I would have gotten that dog, I would have given it to him and asked him to become my boyfriend. Like, real boyfriend. You blushed and bit down on your tongue. Even if you were to bite it off tonight, you would stay strong. This was perfect gossip for you and the other girls. And even more perfect to get the two into silly situations together. And eventually they just had to confess to each other, right? <laughs> Man, and I'm glad the other guys quit on us. They would have caught us gay for going on that ferris wheel. Honestly, I don't think he's interested in me anyways. Your internal screams were so loud at this point, you wondered if you had awoken any mind readers in the near vicinity. Thanks for listening. Well, I'd like some advice. He sighed in defeat. I, I know I would never get it from any of your extras. He scoffed and walked away. You kept betrending for another five minutes, just in case. And when the first ropes of sleep began to snake around your body, you forced yourself awake. Disregarding everything, you immediately began to write down notes of what you just heard. This was going to be your project after the big test, to get these two together. But you needed help. This was more than a one-woman job. Operation Bromance to Romance was about to begin. <laughs>